Hello everybody and welcome back for another video. Tonight we are going to be looking at uh, another really lovely piece, one from the new 2020 ABR Femme Grade 4 syllabus and that is Gluck's Dance of the Blessed Spirit. As usual, we are of course first of all going to look a little bit at what the piece is all about before we get into the nitty gritty of how to play it. In its original, this piece is a lovely little orchestral interlude um, in the context of, um, well, Gluck's most well-known opera, um, Orpheus and Eurydice, which is a setting of a um, classical myth from Greek mythology, the story of uh, the story of Orpheus, which of course we don't have time to uh, to go into tonight, but um, it's it's fascinating and I would really urge you to um, to read up on it if you have the time. Back to the actual piece. Um, in its original, the, the, the tune which you're um, going to play here in this piece is actually played by the flute. It's a, a beautiful, simple melody. And so our task here as cellists is really to, well, to portray that beautiful singing line. And that's what we are going to be exploring tonight. As usual, I'm posting the link to the original um, below the video and I would really urge you to to uh, listen to that before you start uh, start working on the piece so you actually get, get the idea of what we're after. Now, we are trying to achieve, as we said, a really beautiful singing, long singing line in this piece. And um, we are also, well, essentially replacing the flute here. So we are looking for a sound that is um, that is very beautiful, very singing, but not too heavy. So what in this video I'm going to be focusing on largely is what we need to do with our bow in terms of bow speed and bow distribution in order to achieve that beautiful long singing line because there is actually there is quite a lot of technical detail in that in exactly how much bow we use where at what speed and if we do that correctly all of a sudden we'll get this beautiful singing line so we're going to be going through it really bar by bar by bar by bar and um as usual in these pieces, you may or may not you be using vibrato yet, so I will probably be naughty and, be, and use a little bit, but uh, don't worry if you haven't started that yet, the bow alone will give you all the phrasing you want. Now, the first thing to say is here, we are starting in second position, which is not necessarily always everybody's favorite, but the way you you practice getting really secure in finding that first note is by actually practicing forming two double stops and that is first of all the well we're starting on the fourth finger so you can you can do one of two things one is obviously check the fourth finger against the a against the open string so that is one and the other one I definitely recommend is your second finger G. Check that against the open G. So you have that. And you have your A. And if you do that absolutely every time you practice a piece, then after a while, all you'll have to do is that. And you will be secure in where you start. Yeah, so that's very, very important because the one thing you really do not want is to feel jittery at the start of the piece. That's that's not a good start. It's not going to get any better from there if we do that. Yeah, so prepare really well and make sure that your fourth finger is really supported. Can you see here, my, my arm is in a long straight line going from the elbow all the way into that fourth finger. 
and that allows me to um, to start with a beautifully warm supported sound and especially if you want to try and vibrate it it's all about the balance okay so we want to start here as we said with a very beautiful warm but not too heavy sound so you want to start with a comfortable amount of bone <laughs> first challenge because as you as you can see in the first bar we are we, we, we don't have to really save we're using our our bow quite liberally but as soon as we hit the second bar we suddenly have that asymmetry we have two notes slurred versus one note separate and one thing I've noticed when I've worked on this with my own students is that very often that kind of discomfort in how to distribute the bow can actually lead to distorting the rhythm. So here is how you get around that. We start on the first bar, comfortable free bow speed. Mm. As soon as you cross the bar line, your bow speed has to literally halve. So, nice and slow. So immediately you have to really put your foot on the brake here and slow the bow right down for these two slurred crotchets. And of course that comes twice in a row. So you've got... complication and that is going from bar three into um, bar four the string crossing needs to be really imperceptible so um, it should be as small as you can possibly get it so you don't want but then you're going to get a horrible accent on that open a and you don't want that the way you always check that you're doing the minimal possible string crossing is you look down towards your, your, your bow and you really want to see that your, your, bow, your bow is as close to bow strings as it can possibly be. So that's a trick. Now, that takes us to bar five, to the long tied over D with a grave note. The first thing to avoid here is using too much bow on the grave note. I see an awful lot of... And then, of course, uh, you've got four beats on that note and you are literally running out of air here. Yeah, you, You're really feeling like, oh, I've got no bow left. So here's what we do instead. We're, you don't need to spend any bow whatsoever on that grace note right the grace note is really done pretty much right under your hand here so and then save and here's how we make the crescendo as the crescendo progresses our bow speed increases so one two three one. so the way i stagger it is i use very very little bow on the first two beats a little bit more on the last speed of the fifth bar and I have almost got half a bow for the tight over note and the shift that's coming up. That's very important. Always, always, always leave bow for the shift. Very important. Yeah, so... Um, again, balance that arm. slow the bow down right now we have to extend at this point to go on very very important here when you do that so your first finger stays 
your thumb has to move forward with two, three, and four for you to get to that X sharp, yeah? So exactly the same bow distribution rules as, in, as we have at the beginning. So, and then always on the third beat, you, use, you have to use a little bit more bow, but very, very light. So you've got that, you, you, you've got that complete opposite, the first two beats, you use the bow very slowly, but with a very focused sound, and on the third, you use it much more lightly but with more speed and the, the two combined actually give you one lovely long line yeah so we've got each with a set of hairpins and here is how you're going to do this you start you start by saving the bow on the three crotch on the three quavers the three slurred quavers and then on the separate ones we're going to stagger how much bow we use so we use a little bit less on the first and so you get that hairpin naturally the shape you make with your bow that it almost sort of looks like it looks like lightning it's very funny that I'm talking about that because there is a thunderstorm happening outside right now as I'm explaining this. So here, here we go, yeah? So you slur. So like that, that's a pattern, yeah? And then again, in, in the next bar, save on the two crotchets, spend a bit more on the last, yeah? So... Repeat. And now, as we go up, two things to watch out for. One, that your left hand is really well balanced as you go into fifth position. And one thing you need to check there. If, if, you're, if you're finding that you're having trouble getting up there, and especially getting up there cleanly, you need to check a couple of things. Where is where is your left elbow? Is it pointing is it pointing behind you or is it pointing out to the side? It should be pointing out to the side so you can reach everything. And if it's pointing backwards, you need to have a look at your left shoulder because more likely than not you are retracting it. Yeah, so make sure your shoulders are right above your hips nicely in nicely in line elbow is out to the side and you will have no problems reaching that. Let's get back to our bow and um, here we want to again, we have a crescendo through that so we save on the minimum and travel on the crotchet, save on the minimum, travel on the crotchet that at the end of each of these bows you have a shift as well so as usual leave bow for the shift yeah so you save travel and shift save it's really hard to, <laughs> to talk and play at the same at the same time so i'll just play it once on that long A. Save because you've got a diminuendo there. And then 
that note ties over into the at tempo, which is the first note of your tune. Though on that tied over crotchet, the note needs to come back to life. So you save and go. And that helps you to get right back into the tune. And then you have got a repeat of the beginning essentially there at the end. Yeah, so those are just some uh, some thoughts on how to work um, work on the piece. And um, of course, as usual, if you have any questions about this, please post them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And um, of course, as usual, I also hope this has been helpful to you. And um, if you liked the video, then please subscribe to my channel, smash that like button and I'll see you soon for another one.